it was just early evening, it was very beautiful, and uh, I never got to the tube station. We were playing on AstroTurf, hit the floor with my head. I just remember thinking, ow, oh, that really, really hurt. I was on a push bike and um, unfortunately I wasn't wearing a helmet. Somebody shouted in the A&E ward, you've been run over by a F bleep 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 motorbike. I was diagnosed with a brain tumour in 2005. I was kneeling down to pick up a pencil and the boy hit me in the head four or five times with a blunt instrument. My uh, own immune system attacks my own body, um, so it attacked my brain. I had a subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, totally out of the blue. And I drifted into a coma, uh, which lasted for about five months. I was brain dead for nine days. So we had a, a, um, a head-on collision and both drivers were instantly killed. I had to go in for an operation, which they told my wife and my daughter, probably one out of hundred people come out of alive. Say your goodbyes now. I, I just stayed in my bedroom at home because uh, that's the only place I was familiar with because uh, I had lots of, lots of problems when I came when I uh, came out of my coma. I started becoming left-handed instead of right-handed. All my emotions are very to the fore and ongoing as you can tell because I'm very upset now. People don't quite understand how to, how to be around you or how to empathise with you properly. I had one really upsetting moment with my GP. It was kind of like stiff up a lip and carry on kind of thing. There was no kind of offer of assistance from the NHS, you know, like connecting the dots for us, okay? Actually, most of this I've done myself. I'm drinking with another guy who was, who was a boy soldier, Somali, and this social worker come to the door, a little woman, and she said, I've come to take you to uh, Osborne 4, head injury assessment unit. My, my friend, the Somali guy, suddenly says to me about half an hour later, look, Steph, you have to go with this woman. This woman wants to fix your head and you have bad head. He said, I have bad head. I wish somebody would fix my head. And I'm so glad I'm very chuffed with that social worker, having the nerve to do that, hey. I'm very, very fortunate that I've got a very strong family around me. Had I not, I, I couldn't think what it would be like just to go home to a flat on your own. A year and a half ago, my husband left after 30 years of being together. My home is in chaos. Lots of friends, never taught us an out. We don't go to family functions, gatherings, were kind of ostracised. My wife developed a, a mental health problem. One night I'd gone out to, to the pub while we were at the university. I'd gone to watch my mate play in a pool competition. She'd taken too many tablets, eh? so she died. Eh? The last word she ever said to me is I went out the flat the previous night was I just want my old Steph back. The pathway for um, recognition, diagnosis and treatment and quick access to treatment needs to be more efficient. It needs to be um, more joined up. I think people need to recognise the importance of it and the enormity of the situation because there is that many people out there. For those people who are, um, who are, who are watching, and who are supporting the APPG, I would urge them to, to encourage those people who are in influential positions to include the survivors themselves.